Peoples of the world, welcome back to the EDH Community Theater, showcasing real decks played by real people over on Spelltable and Discord. And we've got ourselves a rare treat from TikTok content creator, Evie May. Lathiel, the bounteous dawn. Uh, before we dive into her Selesnia life gain shenanigans, uh, there's my social details, there's my Discord, uh, there's my TikTok with all of 190 followers or just approaching that. Evie May has tw uh, 2,749 as of recording. Um, she's pretty big on there. So uh, her TikTok details will also be in the description below, by the way. Be sure to follow her if you don't already. Uh, the server of many things, of course, is where we both uh, often play. Uh, very rarely that we play together because of our schedules, but uh, when we do, it's always a good time. And of course, Board Game Arena. If you want to try some uh, modern European style board games, they've recently got Ticket to Ride on there. So if you want to come play some Ticket to Ride or any other top-tier modern board games, be sure to look for me on that website. All right. Lathiel, the bounty is done, coming from Commander Legends. Got a 4-mana 2-2 lifelink at the beginning of each end step. If you've gained life this turn, distribute up to that many plus 1 plus 1 counters among any number of other target creatures. So Lathiel cannot make itself bigger with that ability, but it really buffs up the team and makes them humongous. And this is every end step, by the way, yours and your opponents that you're going to be getting those plus one, plus one counters. So obviously this deck is gaining a ton, a ton of life, which is why my pack one pick one is Aetherflux Reservoir. Is it a boring pick? Yes. Is it a Death Star? Also, yes. Has ended games for years ever since this has come out. Has also created some very tense board situations where if somebody just looks at you the wrong way, you're just going to Death Star them. If you're not familiar with it, of course, it's you pay 50 life, deal 50 damage to any target. It also comes with uh, some pretty cool life gain triggers of its own anytime you cast a spell, gain a life for each spell you've cast that turn. So we're not really storming off in the deck, but we do have so many ways of gaining life that we'll be able to activate this again and again and again. Oh wait, that's three. That means we've shot down all of our opponents. So that is why that is the pack one pick one. Uh, but this is definitely a go big strategy otherwise. So let us show off what we've got here. Starting with Acroma's Memorial. 7 mana Legendary Artifact. Uh, grant, your key, grant your team Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Protection from Black and Red. So protect your team from removal. Swing out. Obviously we're trying to make our team big, but they have to get through. We don't want to be chump blocked by Sapperlings, for example. So this ensures that uh, nothing's going to stop our team from getting into the red zone. Uh, I'll harm its archive because the amount of life, in spite of how much life we gain, it's never enough. We want more, more, more. Arcane Signet, of course, for the mana fix. Fountain of Renewal just gives us a life out on each of our, our upkeeps. We can always cash this in for a card later if we need to. Pristine uh, Talisman taps for a mana and a life. The Prowler's Helm, the equipped creature cannot be blocked except by walls. The Shadow Spear. Uh, granting the trample and the lifelink, always fun. Uh, Soul Ring, the Book of Exalted Deeds. It says what at the end of our, at the beginning of our R end step, if we've gained three more life this turn, we get to create a three-three angel. Later on, as a sorcery, we can always sacrifice this and put an enlightened counter on one of our angels, making it so that our opponents cannot win the game and we cannot lose the game. The Ozolith is here as well, of course. Uh, we're distributing so many plus one plus one counters that if they get killed, we want to be able to stockpile them and save them for later, and this is the place to do it. Uh, over to creatures. The Albazon Battle Priest. Uh, creatures you control with a plus one plus one counter on it have lifelink. Fantastic. Or how about we give them flying? Abzon Falconer gives them flying. Angel of Vitality. Anytime you gain life, gain... Uh, gain that much plus one instead. It's also plus two plus two as long as you have 25 or more life, which we should consistently have here. Archangel of Thune, plus one plus one counters to the whole team, each instance of life gain. Archivist of Agma, our opponent searches their library, we gain a life and draw a card. It doesn't even have to be like a Demonic Tutor or a Vampiric Tutor, it could just be a Fetchland or a Terramorphic Expanse, something as simple as that. 
Oriak Champion, Conclave Mentor. Uh, this says that we get more plus one plus one counters. Uh, Daybreak Chaplain, just a simple one three with Lifelink, just to get the ball rolling. Dusk Shell Crawler. Uh, creatures with plus one plus one counters on them have trample. That's what it's here for. Essence Warden, Soul Sister Time, uh, Gyre Sage. Throw a bunch of 1 1 counters onto this thing. Tap for a bunch of green mana. Healer's Hawk, flying in lifelink for 1 mana. Heliod. Uh, note that we are not running the combination with Walking Ballista or Triskelion. It's just Heliod Honest on its own. And it's still dangerous. And if we gain li each instance of life gain, put a 1 1 counter on target creature or enchantment we control. And then we can pay a couple mana into it to give a future lifelink. Also, once we get to 5 Devotion, it's a 5-5 five, five Indestructible Creature. So, all upside here, even without the combos. Impassioned Raider. Uh, creatures come in, we gain life. It's a Soul Brother? Yeah, we we'll call it a Funk Soul Brother. There we go, that's what we're doing. Funk Soul Brother. Core Celebrant, another Funk... Uh, trying to decide. Let's say a Soul Sister. Audric. Ah... Uh, Keywords, keywords, keywords. We all love our keywords. We all love Audric. He comes down. For each keyword that we have, the whole team gets it. That's what we want. Uh, Pride Malkin, cute little kitty, granting all of our creatures with plus one, plus one counters on them. Trample. Rocks, Faith Mender. Just double our life gain. Uh, Silvala. This taps for mana and for life gain and for card draw. Yes, everybody gets a draw card off the top of Silvala. That's fine. Totally worth it. Uh, Sarah Ascendant, uh, best one drop in our format, or at least one of the most aggressive. Uh, because you drop this on turn one, it's a 6-6 six, six with lifelike and flying. And you just start swinging and beating face and getting to work right away. Uh, Shuttered Angel, uh, a land enters the, enters the battlefield under an opponent's control. We may slash we will gain three life. Soul Sister, Soul Sister. Sunscorch Regent. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, it gets a counter. We gain a life. Uh, soul Sister-ish. Not sure. I'm going to say Soul Sister for Suture Priest. Uh, Trilocera. Each instance of life gain. This gets a plus one, plus one counter. And we get to scry one. An excellent life gain commander in his own right, by the way. Uh, Caesar's got one of these. I'm trying to tune one up right now. I've got a base build so far, but it's... It gets scary, and then it gets uh, it, then it gets stomped before it can, before it can really cash in on that scariness, personally. So I'm still working on that. Uh, I'll definitely share my list once it's ready. But still, an excellent uh, excellent commander in its own right, an excellent fit here, being able to scribe the best cards in our deck to the top. Uh, Trustani. Hey, if we get creature tokens, we can populate them. Oh, and each time a creature comes in, we gain a bunch of life. And Wall of Reverence, at the beginning of our instep, gain life equal to the power of target creature we control. So the bigger the creatures we have, the more life we gain from this, and the bigger our creatures end up becoming because of our commander. Nice little cycle there. Circle of Life Gain. There we go, that's what we're calling it, Circle of Life Gain. Alright, so let's go into some enchantments. We've actually got a lot of enchantments in the deck. 19 of them, starting with Ajani's Mantra. At the beginning of our keep, we may gain a life. Sure, uh, very straightforward, very simple. I like it. Angelic Chorus. Uh, whenever a creature comes in, we gain life equal to its toughness. Authority of the Consoles. Our opponents play creatures. They come in tapped. We gain life. Uh, boon Reflection. Double our life gain. Uh, branching Evolution. Double our plus one, plus one counters. Amazing stuff for three mana. Cleric Class. It's level 1 says we gain an extra, anytime we gain life, we get one more. The level 2 says, uh, what each, each instance of life gain, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature we control. And if we bring this up to level 3, we're bringing a creature card from our graveyard back to the battlefield and gaining life equal to its toughness. Death's Presence. Um, if our creatures die, uh, we can send the plus 1 plus 1 counters to another creature. Uh, this doesn't protect us from a full board wipe, unfortunately. Um, but if someone uh, someone throws some targeted removal at us, uh, we'll definitely take full advantage of this. 
uh, Garruk's Uprising. Granting the Trample and some of our bigger creatures when they come into the battlefield will draw some cards. Glorious Sunrise. So five mana. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one. You can have creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and trample until the end of turn. If you've already got your board built up, uh, this is the way to the red zone. Target land gains. Tap, add triple creed until end of turn. That's more for if you're rebuilding. Uh, if, someone's, if someone's already board wiped, you drop this down and get that ramp. Draw a card if you control a creature of power three or greater. If you've got a board state but you haven't quite uh, haven't quite got enough to go to go red, uh, draw the card. You gain three life. If you just want more counters, you just can't take the three life. All fantastic modes here. Griffin Airy. Hey, if you've gained three or more life this turn, create a Griffin. Yes, please. Rari's Wake. Uh, double your mana from your lands. Also, an Anthem Effect. Grant the whole team plus one, plus one. Noble Heritage. This card is way better than it reads. So, um, this doesn't do anything unless you have your commander out. But if this is out with Lathiel, uh, when this creature enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. For each opponent who does, you gain protection from that player until your next turn. So now you're in a conundrum. Um, you have to make a choice, and there's no good choice. You either don't take the buff and hope to swing at the Lathiel player, in this case Eevee, or you take the counters and you swing at your opponents. But you know there's nothing you can do about Eevee, or at the very least you can't throw any direct damage spells at her, can't enchant her of anything. Uh, she's protected from you. There's nothing you can do to her. So, fantastic, fantastic, very sneaky card. This card is way better than it reads. And there's no good choice, because if you don't take the buff, well, your opponents will. And even if, even if you do get through to Eevee, you have to worry about uh, all of the muscle coming from the other directions. Prime Evil Bounty. Cast a creature spell, get another creature. Cast a non-creature spell, get some plus one plus one counters. Uh, play a land, gain three life. All fantastic modes, love it. Retreat to Kazandu. This is whenever a land enters the battlefield under the control, you can put a single plus one plus one counter on target creature, or you can gain two life. More often than not, you're gaining the two life so you can get a bigger Lathiel trigger. Sigarda Splendor. It's a weird little card, but it basically says... I guess the straightforward way of putting it is, if your life total is higher than it was last turn, you draw a card. And also, it gives you the life gain trigger, whenever you cast a white spell, you gain a life, so... Excellent synergy in the deck. A little wordy for what it does, but it does it well. Uh, Sigil of the New Dawn. Four mana enchantment. It says whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay two mana to return that card to your hand. So a great way to protect your board from any board wipes. You just need a couple extra mana lying around, and if someone says boom, just take the cards back to your hand, you don't lose them. Sun Bond. Uh, whenever you gain life, put that many plus one plus one counters on this creature. An excellent, excellent aura for this theme. Uh, Sylvan Library. It says at the beginning of your draw strap, you may draw two additional cards. If you do, you put two of them back unless you pay four life for each card you choose to keep. Uh, spoiler alert, we're getting so much life that we're paying the eight life every single time and just drawing three cards every turn. Because why wouldn't you? True Conviction rounds it out. Triple white three. Creatures you control have double strike and lifelink. That means you can swing out at one opponent and gain so much life that the other two is not going to be able to take you down. Such is the theory. Alright, instants and sorceries. Let's start with Aldami's Call. Uh, two drop any creature we want to put into our hand. Path to Exile, some great removal here. Riot Control. This thing I have seen steal games. The confirmation bias is real. Um, you gain one life for each creature your opponents control. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you this turn. It's a personal fog. But it doesn't stop just combat damage, it stops non-combat damage. If somebody's going off of some sort of uh, 
some sort of, say, a peripheral synergy where they're just dealing damage directly. You can use the ride control, shield yourself from all of that damage. Maybe your opponents die, and it comes down to one on one, and your life total is so high that they're not going to be able to, to, to catch up. That can happen with this card. I've seen it. Um, I've seen a video of Eevee steal a game with this. I've had games stolen from me with it by this card. Fantastic, fantastic little comment from uh, Guilds of Ravnica? Question mark. I forget which Ravnica said it was. But still, fantastic card. Be sure to scoop one up if you don't already have it. Unbreakable Formation rounds out our instants. Bridges we control gain indestructible until end of turn for three mana. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, if you cast this on your main phase, their team gets a plus one plus one uh, buff, all in the form of counters, and they gain vigilance. Awesome. Uh, sorceries are going to go to cultivate. We're going to get explosive vegetation, fumigate to uh, destroy all of the creatures, and shamanic revelation. Not only does this draw a card for each creature we control, chances are um, because we're buffing our team so much, they're all going to be humongous. Which means we would gain an additional 4 life for each creature we control, power 4 or greater. If we have 4 or 5 of them on average, well, we've just gained 16 to 20 life. In addition to drawing all those extra cards. Love it. Two Planeswalkers to talk about. We'll start with Ajani. Uh, two excellent plus ones. One that gives us counters. One that lets us maybe find creatures or auras from the top of our library and put into our hand. If we manage to get the minus 8 on this, we gain 100 life. That is just ludicrous. I love it. Elspeth for Splendid, a little bit more serious, a little bit more classy. Gives us some plus 1, plus 1 counters and some keywords. Uh, let's us also look at our top 7 cards of our library and find the cheap creature to put onto the battlefield, which I like. Or if we build up to the minus 7, create 5 angels with flying that we can then buff up and swing out with. Uh, this is a case where we do want to try and build up to that, build up to the ultimate and get it off. And lands, lastly. We've only got 31 of them. Uh, curve's pretty low, so we should be fine with that. Uh, Blossoming Sands. Gain land. Branch Loft Pathway, which could be turned into a Boulder Loft Pathway instead when you play it. Love the MDFCs for that. Come into play on tap, gives us whatever color we need. Eight forests, a Gavany Township, because every Celestia plus one plus one counter deck has a Gavany Township, as it should. Drake Hilt Refuge, another gain land. Crow Sad Verge, let's just go get a forest at a plains guard. Overgrown Farmland. We have ten planes, a Reliquary Tower, Rogue's Passage, a Celestia Guildgate, Celestia Sanctuary. Stirring Wildwood, which I really like here. It's a man land for three mana. This becomes a 3-4 with reach. Uh, the reason I like this is because if we need to move our plus one, plus one counters around, we can tr animate this, put the one, one counters onto the land. And then it's only a creature when we need it to be, so it's protected from most removal. It would have to take something very specific, like say a strip mine to take it down. Tranquil Expanse and Wooded Bastion round out the mana base. Eevee, Eevee, thank you, thank you for this list. This is this looks like it was a blast to play. I don't think I've had a chance to play against this yet, um, but I'm scared to. I really am. Um, now moving on to shall we say um, how I like some of the spice that I would toss in because I do have a, a little bit of spice. It's always nice. A little bit of Daxos, for example. Another Soul Brother, Funk Soul Brother. Also a great blocker, just being a 2-2 two, two or better. Like 2-4, two, 2-5, two, 2-6. Two, blocks, blocks all of the things to try to come and, try and keep your life total in check. <clears throat> because we're also getting so much life, I think another great, a great way to take advantage of it is to get more tokens. So something like Regna the Redeemer is a great example. At the beginning of each end step, that's ours and our opponents, if we have gained life, create some warrior tokens. There's a few other examples of this effect. So this is one I really like, just to go a little bit wider as well as larger. 
Um, one thing I noticed with the deck, we've got Sunbond, but we didn't have Light of Promise. Light of Promise is the exact same effect as Sunbond, but one mana cheaper. Definitely worth running both, in my opinion. Um, I personally run a deck with Light of Promise in it, but not Sunbond, because I didn't know about Sunbond. The only card of this effect that I knew about going into this video was Light of Promise. So for the, sun, for the same reason you don't, Eevee doesn't have uh, Light of Promise, I don't have Sunbond. So I should probably scoop up a copy of Sunbond and double up on this effect because this is a great effect for life gain. Uh, I, talked to, I talked earlier about uh, a man lands. We should have a couple more, like Lair of the Hydra would be great. This just cycled out of standard, so it should be pretty cheap to, uh, to acquire. Has the potential of coming in untapped also if you uh, play it early enough in the game. But yeah, it's just another place to stockpile some plus one plus one counters if your creatures are getting removed. Just put it onto the layer of the Hydra, and then when you're ready to swing with it, it'll only cost the green to activate, and or you can go green and X, depending on how big you want it to be. And only the one board wipe. Uh, I do have a suggestion for a second board wipe. Tragic Arrogance. What's nice about this is that you choose your best creature, artifact, enchantment, and planeswalker. You choose your opponent's worst of those things. And you've got the best things on the board, your opponents don't. That's the idea of Tragic Arrogance. Fantastic board wipe. I think this is a good one, a good fit here. But again, that is just my opinion. But Eevee's deck is already pretty nasty as is, and I am not def I'm definitely not gonna be one to make any changes to it. It's just how I like to spice things up. Uh, so on that, thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to check out some of the other videos on our channel here. I've got a couple of more recent videos on this side as well. Um, Warhammer and Infinity just ca are coming out. So, or I think Warhammer is out now, and Infinity, if it's not out now, is next week. Might do something with that. Let me have a look. I'll get back to you on that. But. Uh, the hype train keeps rolling, so with that in mind, I will hop back onto my seat, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.